So, just came back from the U.S. I was attending uh, WordCamp U.S. And I think uh, so. Tonight's um, what I call a presentation is going to be about my experiences at WordCamp, and a little bit about moving forward, what WordPress is going to do, and what can WordPress do for you. Um, so, can I ask how many fan, how many of you are huge fans of WordPress? Like you really like WordPress a lot. <laughs> I'm happy to see most hands up. Yeah, yeah, great. I love it. Right. So, if you ne have not heard, but uh, WordPress has reached twenty-five percent market share, meaning you can tell your friends one out of four websites in the world are powered by WordPress, and that's millions and millions of websites. So, what is WordCamp? It's a funny name. The first time I heard about WordCamp, thinking people camping and then talking about code is weird. Yeah. And then I realized it's just a cool name for a conference. So it's basically a conference that really talks about anything WordPress. Um, so before I get straight into uh, WordCamp, every year, starting about three years ago, there's a WordPress community summit where the WordPress team members uh, go and then we discuss about what can WordPress do in the next year. What's lacking WordPress, and uh, what can we do to capture the next seventy-five percent? Yeah. So this is some of the cool people there, and uh, we were situated in this nice events building. So there were about fifty of us there. Um, actually, the extended team is much larger than fifty, but I think not everyone wanted to pay a lot of money to fly to the U.S. So the community summit is um, it's a safe event. So I'm not able to talk about what we have discussed. But I can show you some of the cool things around the community. Yeah. So in the end, this is the team that was there. I'm here. Right. So um, and that's Matt. Yeah, and a few other cool team members that I have. Yeah. So this is actually a picture after two days of intense discussion about uh, things like uh, what can we do as WordPress to you know stop being hated by the PHP community. And uh, what can we do to make it easier for the users? Yeah. So before I go into more pictures, when I was thinking about what can I talk about WordCamp, now I could tell you all the tech topics and it's going to bore the crap out of all of you all. So what I'm really going to talk about is that if you take away the software, you know, the tech portions from WordPress, what is, what is it really all of you are in love with? It's not really the tech. It is about the community, the ecosystem. Uh, so this is what I'm really going to focus about uh, to, in today's presentation. Yeah. So WordCamp US was held in Philadelphia. It's a really nice place. And I'm told that I'm supposed to present a lot of nice photos. So here comes all the nice photos. So it's also the place where the Thinker, uh, this is the Rodin Museum, uh, is located. So I'm amazed to know that um, I'm not a very art person, uh, even though I run a visual communications agency. I was supposed to know that the Rodin is actually not a unique uh, statue, not a unique uh, thing. So it's actually about 12 of them worldwide. Yeah. Um, this is the medium size or the large size. I can't remember. But it's a small size, it's about this. Yeah. Um, food in the US is great, big portions. I'm never able to finish them, but hopefully you've had dinner or at least some of the pizza. So this is Philadelphia. Yeah, this is the church, but I can't remember which church it is, so if you know, you could tell me. But it's basically situated at City Hall. So we had work camp at the uh, Pennsylvania Convention Center, which is also called the Philadelphia Convention Center. It's huge. It's about three quarters of the Singapore Expo with all the six halls combined. This place consists of about four buildings, I think. They were built separately and sort of joined together. Yeah, so we were in the newer wing. Um, it's hard to actually tell you the real scope of WordCamp US, but imagine 1,800 people, so roughly about 600 times this, the current room size. Um, look at all the chairs and imagine two more additional rows behind and they're all filled up. So that's the amount of people. People who love WordPress, designers, developers, users, bloggers, and so on. So, um, oh, the height got cut off. I was trying to show you there's a lot of people. <laughs> so when, when the talk is finished, a lot of people exit. This is usually the scene, and they are talking to each other, you know, connecting, and so on. 
And then um, in there, uh, there's a lot of sponsors uh, who actually made WordCamp happen. So we had a swag store uh, which sells uh, clothes, um, phone casings, a um, little bit knickknacks and stuff like that, which you, uh, we in the end, fund the WordPress Foundation so that you could start continue to sponsor more WordCamps. Um, so in the cool thing I want to share with you guys was that the sponsors there, if you have been to many, many conventions, uh, who goes to, uh, I'm sorry to say, who goes to the, the Chinese uh, Chamber um, Convention every year, the SME Convention? So they sometimes have the sponsors around or the little booths, but the atmosphere is usually very, I'm going to sell you something. Uh, I'm going to get your email, I'm going to spam you to death. Now, the atmosphere there was a little bit different. They, there were a lot of games and such and whatnot, such that you'd be really interested in talking to them and finding out the services. So here, we actually have a, a, a guy who's actually picking up a coin. So if you get the black coin, which is probably about 1 in 30, you get to choose between a huge iPhone drone, which you can fly around, and then if not, other things like uh, you know external hard disk and so on. So there are... Other, what they call that, um, um, if you heard of the Media Temple, they are hosts. There are other hosts uh, and sponsors. They are hanging around, just you know, giving out free stuff, free hosting, and things like that. Because they love WordPress. The truth is, probably most of their customers right now are on WordPress. So, if you ever have to run an event and you're trying to get emails from people, you know they're not going to give it to you willingly, or they might write you a fake email. Then this is how you should be doing it. I'm going to take it up. So they had this little bit of a cut, it's called a container folding game. So what you do is actually you first take it out, yeah, and then you fold a little box. There are lines that uh, help you, guide you. And you write your name and email. Yeah. So when you put it, when you fold it, and then they'll give you a bunch of small free gifts, a little bit of socks, you know, Merry Christmas socks and so on. And then, in the end, they're they very smart. What they did is they uh, said that the, the winner picked every day will get a free Apple Watch. Yeah. Yeah, so this is how much was collected. So imagine this tiny, tiny little box collected over this much. And in the end of the whole conference, there's a lot more boxes than this. So there are interesting things like booths that, you know, uh, like what you go to uh, at Marina Bay or Sentosa, you get a backdrop and stuff like that, and then they take you at work camp. Yeah. And I'm going to hand this out. Who knows what's WAPU? Yeah, okay, I think there's only one guy. It's our uh, WordPress mascot. It's this little thing that looks like Pikachu. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm going to hand this out, but try not to drop my phone. And you can look at it. It's, uh, it's an interesting uh, web app, but it's also an a, a iOS version, but I, I couldn't find it. So, you move around, move around. Yeah, so it's, 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 it adjusts. So, it's a web app that adjusts uh, based on the gyroscope on your iPhone. So it will pass around, so eventually you get to see it. So there's a lot of people trying it out. So these people, like uh, what Alex was saying, Amimoto, they were actually, you know, they, what they did was, we were trying to example that Google Cardboard thing. Maybe it's not really Google Cardboard. Yeah, but what they did was that basically, like, you play with this and give you a Google Cardboard. So you can download the app and do it at home. Um, if you have ever heard of Security, that's a good uh, WordPress security company to go to. So if you ever do some big, big project with your client, they say, or the government, and they say, what are the um, steps you are taking to secure our website? Good people to go to. I, I'm, I don't work for them, so I'm just telling what's good for WordPress. Right. So at the WordCamp, we have this thing called a happiness bar. It's a funny name. I never knew what it was until I went there. Mm -hmm. I was volunteering at a happiness bar as well. So it's a place where people just come and ask, I've got this WordPress website, and I need to do this. How can I do that? Yeah. So that's what uh, it really is. Um, it would be quite amazed because uh, the most hardcore developer comes to us this, and these are usually meant by really, really professional developers or you know, sometimes even bloggers who just talk to you about how can you use WordPress in a more intuitive way without knowing coding, things like that. Yeah. So there were a lot of speakers, I think about 53, I can't remember the full uh, number, from various, various countries and whatnot. Yeah. Some very, very famous people. 
If you don't see anything, maybe the screen switch off, just let me know and then I will switch off. Is it, does it switch off? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, will turn, I will turn off the lock and then I'll pass it back to you all. Could you help me turn off the auto lock? Yeah. Sorry, did someone ask something? Uh, I just wondered ah. what, what are the stars? Oh, the stars are just space. So basically, it's Wapu flying through space. Kind of like Nyan Cat. Yeah. Okay, found them. Yeah. Right. So um, a lot of talks, actually, if you go to say quite a few conferences, you see that a lot of talks are not well with it. But most of the talks are this is the most empty talk that was ever. If not, most of them were filled up. Yeah. But the funny thing is that I noticed work camp was that a lot of people don't actually go into the talks. What they do is they stand around and they talk to each other. And the truth is. Also, that you don't go to work camp to actually attend the talks. You go to there to talk to people. So I, I noticed a bunch of the WordPress team members. I, this is my first work camp, by the way. So uh, the rest of them who are more uh, what do you call that uh, well acquainted with WordPress and the community, they just basically did not attend any talks. They spent all three days just talking to people. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, one of the rooms. So there were about three such big rooms. So the talks were quite interesting. So you have things like design, the art of minimalist design. You have coding stuff, React plus WordPress. You have things like, how did WordPress change my life? Yeah. Which is pretty cool because actually I have a team member who says that um, she was jobless out of school, didn't have a formal education, uh, got married young, didn't know what she was going to do. So she started a WordPress blog. Then she started to do more. And then she started to get a job through working with WordPress. So um, this is actually the front of the uh, what do you call it? The canteen, not the canteen. The, it's a great hall, but we use it as food uh, later on the lunch. And if you notice that WordPress every release is named, uh, you got to move the phone around by the way to see the wapus. So um, every release is named after a jazz musician. Some dead, some alive. I think mostly dead. Um, so this was a jazz band. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. So we were eating lunch and listening to a jazz band. So. Um, I can't share with you all the talks, and I'm not going to bore you with it, but I thought two of the talks were really interesting. Uh, one is WordPress is being used by the White House. Yeah. Not the word whitehouse.gov.us or and so on. But the White House is actively promoting WordPress and open source projects to be used because they are developed by thousands of people. So some of the projects, this is a cool one sites.gov. Now basically this is the government website that tells you, are you a government agency? Would you like a WordPress website? We are going to create a WordPress website for you. Uh, so if I were the F FBI and I thought, I'm going to create a Christmas party website, I could go to sites.gov. So this is the entire WordPress multi-site system. Right? So things like this, you see? The big WordPress logo on the US uh, website, government website. Right. So. I think the key takeaway here is that uh, one of the things that we discussed, actually we just had a meeting about two days ago, a uh, bunch of us discussing about next year, what we can do with the meetup and so on, that the Singapore community don't really use WordPress. Yeah. Joomla is still history in the government. Right. WordPress is used, but you don't see a lot of big agencies. Yeah. So we are hoping that everyone here, after listening to this, you will be able to change that. Yeah. So, any one of you actually bid for government projects? Yeah. I, I used to until they stop. I stopped trying to convince them WordPress is good. Yeah. So um, maybe next time we should start. Right. So the other talk was by Andrew Nassin. Uh, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that this talk was actually by uh, one of the people working in the White House. Yeah. So her name is Sarah Cope. Yeah. 
So, oh, I should have put an animation. Okay. So the next talk was by Andrew Nassin, lead developer of WordPress. And I think this is quite important for the developers or you know, your sales manager trying to sell WordPress solutions to people. So people always, oh, someone dropped my phone. So sad. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's always believed that WordPress is so backwards compatible, it must be, you know, there's a lot of extra code and so on. But the truth is, a lot of this extra code doesn't even run unless you are on a legacy system or you're using something legacy. Which means if you're updated, you are running everything quick, you are, you are using the latest systems, you don't even run the old code. Uh, so they are there, they're just taking out bytes of space on your hard disk. They're doing nothing. They're not going to make your system any slower. So to the PHP community at large, if you ever get someone telling you, hey, WordPress is supporting PHP 5.2. Yeah. So you know you should get them to move on and so on. You can tell them, it doesn't matter. We support the highest, we support the lowest. Yeah, we're kind of the everyone's uh, CMS. Um, the second thing that I took away from this was that because WordPress is so upgradable, I just recently upgraded a 2.5, I think, to 4.3.1. Not yet to 4.4. Thank you, thank you. So not yet to 4.4, and it worked. It really worked. So how many of you can say that for the same for any other CMS or even software operating system that you can upgrade from versions that were there about eight years ago and still you know, get it to the latest without any issues? I think WordPress can. So that's why we have grown to from you know the smallest market share, people bully us and think that we're a blogging platform, to something now uh, which is 25% of the internet. Yeah. So this is this backwards compatibility, the fact that we care about users, and you know, the truth is um, one of the things that Andrew was saying that there are about two sites in the world that are using one of the oldest uh, things that we haven't removed. And one is Matt's website. Yeah, and uh, the other is someone else's, I can't remember who he is. So the truth is, we could say, let's remove this piece of code and save about five bytes. But then we break two websites. Yeah. So is there something that we should do? Probably not. With the two bytes, the five bytes hurt anyone? It doesn't. Is it safe? Yes, it's safe. So this is sort of why WordPress has grown so much. So. A few key ta takeaways that I had from actually attending WordPress, sorry, WordCamp, is that WordPress creates jobs. So this is actually a whiteboard there where people fill in, I've got a job opening. Yeah, and then this is relatively empty. And then at the, uh, towards the second day, this is like that. On, on the third day, oh, that's me, by the way. Yeah. All right, I just wanted Singapore to be up, so I just wrote Singapore big. <laughs> yeah, by the third day, it was squeezed everywhere. I, didn't, I couldn't find a picture of that. So WordPress is family. So after the uh, conference, actually we had parties every night. Yeah, but after the conference, this is the main after party. So there were photo taking, there were pool. It was at this huge um, family uh, bowling alley, which is about three floors and so on. And then free drinks, bowling, pool, and we had other stuff. I can't remember what. Uh, I have no idea what I was doing by the end of the night. Yeah, so. Um, and then we went to other parties. You see, a bunch of us, pro like uh, inners who just joined the team, and a few of us probably just talked online for years. And then when we met, we, we knew which, oh, we, we just connected. So um, then we went to karaoke and stuff like that. And, and you know, even though, to, to be honest, we didn't really talk about anything tech. We just talked about how WordPress could actually help people, how we could do more WordPress websites for people. People bring their children. One of uh, my team members is actually a 50 plus year old lady who's got a 26 year old daughter and she brought her, both of them are WordPress professionals. So it's starting to actually go transgeneration. Is it the correct term? Yeah. So friends who have met after years of just chatting online or collaborating. Yeah. So WordPress is diverse and this is the first time I've attended a tech conference whereby the majority is not actually, okay, the majority is still male, but it's not overly dominated by males. Uh, so if you look at this, pretty much about 40% females, yeah. And then lots of girls and so on. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is it's a good uh, distribution of male and females and other races and so on. So, um, if you take anything away from this uh, presentation, I want you to realize that WordPress is and will continue evolving. Right. Oh, I cut off Matt's head, it's going to hate me. Okay. 
Um, so earlier on, when WordPress came out, it was a blogging platform. Uh, when it was uh, Fox from B2. And then it became a CMS, which we can safely now say is the best CMS system in the world. Or this is the most versatile. Then our next step is we want to become an app platform. Yeah. So which is why uh, the recently halfly released uh, REST API, the JSON REST a API into the, the WordPress core is such a big thing. So um, there's this site called Story Corps. So just go and Google it later. Uh, if you have uh, watched State of the World, you have seen that uh, Story Corps is an app that allows you to record uh, you know, the stories of your grandparents, how they lived, and so on. And then what it does is actually it goes to the, the WordPress JSON REST API and it connects to the website front end. So the future is, and I kid you not, if you think apps are dying, it's possible, but if you want to drive a bigger business, use the REST API, connect your website to an app, and sell that as a solution to your client. So um, I shamelessly took this from Matt's uh, uh, um, slides. Sorry. Yeah. So um, JavaScript and API-driven interfaces are the future. So what uh, Valentine was showing you just now, Calypso, that is a small taste of what's coming. In the future, you will be able to visit websites just once after you visit it at home or anywhere with your internet access. And you take the MRT and suddenly you're disconnected from the internet. Fear not, because your websites will still work. That's the future. So WordPress will continue to lead web trends. Now, why, why do I say that? Um, because when 25% of the internet uses something, the rest of the world, the browsers cannot ignore it. So one of the things that uh, was released with WordPress 4.4 is responsive images. How many people know what the responsive images do? OK, yes, the, I knew you would know. Great. So our websites are already responsive. But you sort of have to write code to say, hey, load this smaller size for the phone. But with responsive images, it allows you to, to not do that. And what it will do is it will just tell your browser to look for the most correct size and load that instead. Now, that is not a uh, confirmed spec in the next HTML5, in, well, in the HTML5. So, but now that WordPress has used it, pretty much 25% of the internet is eventually going to start using it. So, we are now in a position to actually push the rest of the internet and say, use this cool thing because it works. Yeah. So, no other entities can actually do that. So, if you are with WordPress right now, you'll be part of the crowd that actually says, hey, we are doing cool stuff, follow us. So, oh, I, I should have said that first. So, <laughs> that is the experience of me going to work at US. Yeah, and um, really, it was a marvelous experience. Uh, I was a little bit worried about, hey, I'm going to spend a lot of money with a hotel, the food, and everything else there. And I do not regret it. I came back, I'm still sick, but don't worry, I'm not going to spread it to you all. I'm heavily medicated. Yeah. Um, it was worth it. Yeah. So, next year, we're going to run WordCamp Singapore. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get 1,801 people. But I'm really hoping for a, a decent sum. And it's going to start from you guys being excited about this. So what's going to happen is we're going to have sponsors in, you know, giving out free stuff. We're going to have uh, talks. We're going to have international speakers coming in. And then the best thing of you, go, you, you might be able to meet quite a few of the cool WordPress uh, core people and talk to them about WordPress. Yeah. And even if you are not interested in development, design, you could talk to other people who just use WordPress for a living. How could I use WordPress to make a living? You don't need to sell websites, but you could build a website, say an e-commerce website, so how can I do that? And the people there, whether they are professionals or whatnot, they are not there to actually sell you something. They're there to teach you. So when I was there, the truth is I brought a huge thick stack of NIM cards. I distributed about 10 which then afterwards, I stopped bringing it at all. Because in the end, I realized no one was doing that at all. It was just people there trying to help each other. And in the end, you sort of connect up through Twitter, email, and so on. You don't need the name card. Because eventually, if they know you and you trust you through the WordCamp, you don't need the name card to sell them services. So this is our website. It is not fully up. Some little widget there telling you, hey, put in your email to subscribe to the latest updates. So go to singapore.wordcamp.org, 
Um, please use the widget to subscribe to us, and then once we have uh, any information, we will broadcast it to you all. Um, so what can you do at Le WordCamp? So um, you can learn, of course, attend the various talks. You can get help. I'm going to really run a happiness bar, so bring your WordPress website and so on, and then say, how can I do this? Uh, connect with people from overseas, uh, extend your reach, and collaborate. I want to build the next biggest WordPress plugin. And then you don't know who Lester is, uh, so you can say, hey, now I'm at WordCamp, I can look for Lester. Yeah. Can you build me the next biggest uh, plugin in Southeast Asia or Asia? So uh, I've got a question to ask you. If we were to run, uh, we will definitely run WordCamp. So, oops, would weekdays be better for you all? So I'm just going to do a quick informal vote. Who's happy with WordCamp being on weekdays? You get to take days off work, you know? Yeah. Uh, probably one. Yeah. Probably one day. Yeah. Okay, great, a majority. You can take days off work. Very good. Yeah. So um, join the website and uh, join our Facebook group, meetup.com and so on. And in the next few months, we're going to post very exciting news about WordCamp. So the plan is, and I, I'm hoping I'm sharing it with the right crowd, is that if we do WordCamp Singapore great, in the next year, maybe there might be a WordCamp Asia. So you see the Japanese people, the Thailand, Taiwanese, and everyone congregating, perhaps in Singapore, I don't know. Uh, but and then you get to talk a lot to these WordPress people. So, last housekeeping. Um, next meetup will likely be in January. Um, we would love to have some JavaScript experts because as Matt says, JavaScript is the future. Um, if not, I think uh, we have really, really want people to talk about these few topics. But if you are not a developer, talk about content creation, writing, uh, SEO, um, you know, things like that. Anything you do with WordPress, talk about it. We would love you to have you. So, um, yeah, so about, that's about it. So that's me. And you can see the videos of all the talks of WordCamp US at WordPress.tv. And not just WordCamp US, but all the other WordCamps in the world and other meetups. WordCamp, WordPress.tv. Or you can tweet me at Kenshino, so that's me. I'm at Kenshino everywhere. Right, so uh, that's all. So uh, do I have any questions? Uh, John? Yes, okay. please. Uh, good talk. So when you plan for WordCamp, when do you think that will happen? Which, which month? We are trying to push it onto the third quarter. Uh -huh. yeah, um, exact month, I don't know. We are trying to see, one of the things that we love about WordPress is that they, we try to synergize with each other. So we have Micah's PHP conference. Yeah, I'm, I'm really advertised. Uh, I don't know which month yet. And then we have WordCamp Tokyo. So we're trying to put them close together. And in such a way that people flying, say, from the, uh, WordCamp Europe happens in June. So, hey, I'll rest a while and then I'll start flying to Singapore, attend Singapore's WordCamp, move up to Tokyo, uh, attend PHP conference, then move up to Tokyo. And so this is the general plan. It is not set in concrete. We are still discussing with the WordCamp Tokyo people. Uh, Valentine, Robert, Michael, Lester uh, are part of the, uh, the committee to create WordCamp Singapore. Yeah, so, um, yeah, does that answer your question? I, I don't uh, know yeah. which one yet, but third quarter. Right. And, right. And, and the audience is still with the focus on building the knowledge and sharing. I would say the focus will be uh, spread amongst the, the few topics, uh, so development, design, content creation, social media, stuff like that. Um, I would like to not make it so developer uh, heavy, uh -huh. yeah. Because in the end, I think most of us developers we can learn anything online. Just Google, yeah. But what secrets can you learn for another WordPress person? Now that's not something we can put on the, the slides or you know, through a talk. So in the end, when I went there, I just basically asked, so how does your company do this? If my company is doing A, is B better? Yeah. So these are people who can tell you that. So if you were if you are thinking, what can WordPress really, what can really give to me? That's really what it can give it to you. Real professional advice for free. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. Thanks. Um, any questions? Great. So. Um, I have a question. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> 
I'm just curious, like, why the government here in Singapore will turn down for the press? Right. <laughs> um, off the record. from my experience, um, yeah. I just moved here and yes. uh, I'm like expat, so I've been working with the... Um, Sorry. Oh, just this one? Oh, it's very <laughs> oh, that's okay, that's okay. No, no. That's okay. Because I'm not part of the government, so I can say that. Yes. Please go, yeah. I just want to say I have some like, very awful experience. Mm. Like, uh, say, just use uh, uh, websites from the government sector. So I was wondering why they yeah. still. Yeah, that's it. So, um. Okay, I'll try to be as honest as possible. Uh, my experience with working with. Um, Okay, I used to work at NCS so long time ago. <laughs> I used to do a lot of government websites. So if you have visited some catered government websites, probably through my hands. Uh, but a lot of times it's not the designers and developers, the user experience people there who are deciding how it goes. A lot of times it's basically the suits deciding how they want the site. And why WordPress is not being used? Because a lot of these suits believe WordPress is for blogs. Yeah. So this starts from you guys telling people that WordPress is not just for blogs. It powers 25% of the internet. How can it be just for blogs? Right. So um, I think uh, this change needs to start from us. And now that the Singapore uh, WordPress community is still growing, this is essentially the time for every one of you to jump in. Because by the time it's grown, too late. Yeah. So maybe it's a bit too late to go into the US because it's such a big thing there, but do it here. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'll say uh, in the end, it's uh, more about educating them that WordPress is good. Yeah. So hopefully my sites have helped you. And um, yeah, I'll take one more question if anyone has any. Right, so the time is 8.38. We're gonna leave by nine, so there's 20 minutes I think the, I hope the beer tap and everything is still open, so you still can go outside and mingle around until nine. Uh, I'll do a little bit of open talking to people. If you've got a WordPress question, whether it's about development design, the WordPress team, WordPress.org, and so on, I can't answer a lot of WordPress.com questions, but I can answer a lot of WordPress.org questions. Uh, please feel free to talk to me. Yeah. So thank you for coming. Oh, before you leave,